What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, it's been a while, I know, but uh, today I'm actually going to be talking about a a, uh, a comic that I have been reading lately. Um, this comic has been a has been one that I've been reading and absolutely adoring. Um, I've really been loving it. Uh, it's it's been unfolding really well. The artwork is like ten out of ten. Um, the stories are just pretty basic, but the art, you know, complements it so well uh, that you don't even really mind that. And I don't hear any, um, anyone, you know, kind of uh, giving it its due, uh, which is weird, you know. I find that, you know, I go around on, on comic websites or anything like that or any videos and no one's really talking about it, you know, no one's really, um, giving it the praise that it deserves, uh, and the comic that I'm talking about is Francesco Francavilla's The Black Beetle. Um, it's about three issues, although technically this is issue number zero, which essentially what that is, is what Dark Horse does is they serialize a lot of their um, newer stuff in um, kind of like a magazine anthology kind of thing called Dark Horse Presents. Uh, so what they do is they do a test drive on them, and they put them in this thing called Dark, uh, Dark Horse Presents, and it has just a bunch of different stories in it. And, um, and I guess, judging on the strength of it, they'll give it its own issue, and then they'll start it at, in a run in issues. I'm not too certain, but, uh, yeah, this is the Dark Horse Presents stuff, uh, compiled in one issue. Um, I don't know how many, I think it was like three or four issues of Dark Horse Presents. I can't, I can't totally remember. Um, and yeah, it, it got a Neisner for best covers. I mean, well, Francesca Francavilla is, uh, is amazing. Um. What's it about? It's about this kind of pulp noir hero named the Black Beetle. Um, he's essentially in the same vein as like the Shadow or the Green Hornet or the Spider or what have you. He's one of those old time detectives that wears costumes, you know, something that you would hear off an old radio seri serial back in like the 30s or the 40s, you know. Um, and it's just him solving crime. That's it. It's just a straight up fucking, um, you know, vigilante book. And it's, it's great, you know, like Francesco Francavilla plays a lot with the, with the tone and the feeling of the book, uh, because at the start of every issue, you see a, um, a shot of an old time tube transistor radio. And it's like, you know, presenting now, the Black Beetle. You can just hear the little theme song. And you can hear Orson Welles kind of, you know, talking about it, you know, in the same vein as like the Shadow radio show way back when or something like that. Um, and, you know, there's always like billboards that uh, Francesca Francavilla draws, you know, kind of like fake movie posters or something like that that are like the sideways ones that are kind of like B-movie ones or something like that. Um and it just adds to, like, the atmosphere of it just really well. Um, so essentially, you know, it starts off in, in issue zero. Um, this one is called Murder in the Museum. Essentially what happens is uh, there's this artifact, this ancient Egyptian artifact called the Hollow Lizard, I believe. And these Nazis who have jetpacks, uh, come in and try to steal it for a cult. And essentially it's got powers and stuff like that. And the Black Beetle comes in and he stops them and, you know, all that stuff. Um, then in issue number one, in No Way Out, it deals with the Mafia. Um, and it kind of, you know, it takes place, you know, it, it takes place after that. And, um, and you get this, this weird villain who essentially the cover here uh his name is labyrin labyrinto which as you can tell you know he's got kind of a labyrinth 
elaborate design all over his body. Um, you know, and then you, you realize he may have ties to this cult or something like that. And it's just, it's good stuff. It's, it's really, you know, you sit down, it's, it's simple stories. I mean, it's nothing that's going to blow your mind, but, uh, you get enthralled into it because it's just such a great little love letter to Pulp Fiction and, um, the artwork. Oh my goodness. The artwork. Anyone who has ever read a Francesca Francavia book knows how amazing the artwork is in this. And it's funny. Um, I've been reading Scalped quite a lot lately, and I saw that Francesco Francavilla did an issue in one of the trades that I got, and I remember reading it, and I was like, this does not look a thing like Francesco Francavilla. And that's kind of a disservice, because it didn't look that good, to be totally honest. Um, and now, you know, to see where he is now, in 2013, 2012, um... The guy has just improved his style so much, and he plays so much with color, with yellows and oranges and grays and reds. Um, you know, it's it's such a good, good book. Um, I would highly recommend it um, to any fan of crime fiction or pulp fiction or anything like that. You know, it's good stuff. Um, definitely check it out. And... Um, Read it with your eyeballs. Alright, so uh, thanks for watching.